San Diego Comic-Con, how does it feel to be coming here after a huge successful season for this new exciting show? What do you think about uh, how the response has been so far for Man in the High Castle? Captain? Captain. <laughs> um, one thing is clear about the show, it's, it's not for everybody. We didn't realize, I think, for most of us, and especially the actors, that it not being for everybody, there's so many everybodies that have been left out for a long time. And that, that's the most exciting thing to me, is that we are a show that is of a quality for those left out and for those looking for something different than the run-of-the-mill commercial. Makes you think, which is highly uh, contradictory for most <laughs> visual arts we have today. So I, I, I look at it as the beginning of a movement and thanks to <laughs> our producers who were bold enough to bring it to Amazon, we have a, a chance to do it. Very happy, we're all very happy with the response. I just think it's exciting. I mean, the, the material itself is, you know, inspiring um, fans for, for so many years and it's such a transcendent piece of material. So to be able to take an alternative history and find for audiences what their access points, how they relate to this world, how it informs their own sort of modern day life and experience, that's been really exciting to see because you can't predict that. And the world today in particular is changing so fast and in some ways is so disturbingly relevant to a lot of the stories we're telling. So it's, it's pretty thrilling as it is unpredictable. The book is uh, is beloved by a group of people, but it's not as like prominently known as a lot of a lot of literature out there. Was that an obstacle, or was that actually a benefit as you put the show together, not knowing that you didn't have to adhere to such a very strict um, expectation for an audience? I think for I mean for Frank Spotnitz, who who did the adaptation, um, I think I think adaptations are always tricky, especially when when you have a piece of material that is as highly regarded as this was. It's a very intimidating piece. So the challenge was to try and find what sort of the narrative drive was going to be for each of these characters, especially since we're taking on distinctive worlds. The series is infused with that book, but we're not obviously following chapter by chapter a story that pre-existed us. I think this is where the millennials meet the baby boomers. Oh yes. Yeah, because um, we are the boomer generation, lived through the 60s and the peace movement, and the millennials are finding out how much power they have uh, to affect the whole political process. And as we did in the 60s, we stopped the war. So it, it's a meeting of, of power, a view of power, and uh, creation. And, and this is the beauty of the creativity that David's referring to, of how we can shape that, not only with what the material is, but even deeper into, into character. It was weird when they first had the pilots, where, you, where, where they were put out there. And, and, and obviously your show sticks out like a sore thumb amongst the rest of them. Um, was that, was it, what was that experience like, like that kind of very public focus group that you, that you went through? What, what was that, I mean, there's no comparison in, in, in entertainment, really. Well, it, it's an interesting question, because uh, as, you, as you may know, it took us an extraordinarily long time to find a home for this. When we started this whole journey, Amazon was not even a, a buyer option. Um, but to your question, Amazon and the way that they release um, projects is, is quite distinctly different than, uh, than the traditional sort of uh, broadcast model. And it was, I mean, Frank talked about this a lot last year, it was a very odd experience because you're entering into a community that is sort of your immediate focus group. People are commenting online and, and we have no point of reference. Amazon hasn't been doing this very long, so we don't know, well, is 1,000 a lot? Is 10,000 a lot? Is 16,000 a lot? You're looking at your grids and your graphs. And, and I mean, to Carrie's point, it's like, there's, there's an immediacy in the world right now where, where everybody's remarking and commenting. And, and it, it took us, I think, some time to learn how to ingest that, how to appreciate that. And then ultimately, you know, how to move on from that, um, because you still want to be true to your characters, true to your story. But it was, uh, I mean, it was, it was exciting to have that kind of feedback.